Okay, dear students, let us see how to do this question. X and Y are two coherent sources of waves. Phase difference between X and Y is zero. So they're talking about the initial phase difference, okay? Because they're coherent, the phase difference will be constant. The initial phase difference will be constant. It might be zero, it might not be. But it is given that it is zero. Anyways, the intensity of P due to X and Y separately is I. So the intensity here is I, here is I. Both of these intensities are now going to superpose each other at the point P. The wavelength of each wave is 0 0.2 meter. And what is the resultant intensity at point P? So we want to find the resultant intensity at point P. Fine. Okay. So how do we do it? So first of all, we have to understand the conditions of constructive interference and destructive interference here. So let me give you a little detail on it. Like as per the constructive interference is concerned, first of all, we talk about the path difference and the path difference should be equal to n lambda. I just write path difference as delta x. So the path difference is literally the path traveled by this wave minus the path traveled by this wave. From there, we will find like number of wavelengths that have been crossed over and whether the crest, crest of one is overlapping the crest of the other or not, whether the crest of one is coming onto the top of trough. So we have to find it. That is why we want to find the delta x. So delta x is given by n lambda and if the n is integer, and I'm just writing one, two, and three, I'm not considering zero here, <clears throat> because if it comes out to be equal to zero, it becomes a central maxima. We do not call it first maxima. We call it central maxima. So for the first maxima, you got to have n is equal to 1. Clear? Just to clarify, like n is equal to 0 will be a maxima known as central maxima. Even this will be maxima although, but you don't call it first. That is why I have not enumerated this thing here. I am not writing 0 here. Now, uh, what else? Uh, we can find theta, the angle, the angle with the the center of the these two slits and what will be the angle with the uh, the middle line so this theta is given by n lambda divided by small d where small d is the distance between the two slits so this becomes for angle and if you talk about the vertical distance of uh, the central maxima on the slit like uh, on the screen like this is the central point so what is this or if you talk about like the fourth maxima, so what is this distance? So I'm just calling it y, fourth maxima, third maxima, second maxima. So this, it comes out to be n lambda capital D divided by D. Okay. And uh, from this, um, first of all, the n is taken as one. Okay, fine. So this is it. So this is constructive interference. Now let us talk about the destructive interference for uh, the similar things. Yeah, for destructive interference, basically the delta x comes out to be equal to n minus half into lambda, where n is again the same thing. So n is the element of 1, 2, 3 and all. And theta is given by n minus half into lambda divided by small d and y, the corresponding y's will be n minus this into capital D. So everything is replicated now. Now, the most important point that I want to uh, emphasize here is, like you see, I have chosen n minus half here. Fine. Like in the bright spots, you would be like, um, if you're talking about the fourth maxima, fourth maxima or the fourth bright point, so you would be choosing n is equal to four. Similarly, in the dark band, if you're talking about the second dark point, you would be using n is equal to two. Okay, in all these things, but there is a problem in our data booklet, which is here. I've opened it like this is the data booklet. You see for the topic 4.4, they are using this formula and there is plus here n plus half. Now, what is this problem? I am writing n minus half. So why I am bringing in this variation in the formula? I'm bringing this variation in the formula because when you have n plus half here, the n should start with 0. And here, we would be starting only with the 1. Now, 
if you're starting with zero, even that is not a problem. Like you can start with zero. What is the problem there? The problem is like if you talk about the fourth dark dark band or the fourth dark fringe, you have to substitute n is equal to three. Like when n is equal to zero, you have the first dark. When n is equal to one, you have the second dark. When n is equal to two, you have the third dark. But as per as the bright fringe is concerned, at n is equal to one, you will have the first bright. At n is equal to four, you would be having fourth bright. So this comes straight forward. But here there is a discrepancy that if n is equal to three, only then you are having the fourth dark band. So th this discrepancy is coming. Like if uh, you are talking about fifth dark dark band, you would be confused whether we should take n is equal to four or n is equal to five. According to this formula, n plus half, you have to choose n is equal to four. Now that's erroneous. And obviously, majority of the students would be pro having problem with this. They will get confused. Like, why? Why is that? So, to remove this discrepancy, what I have done is I have changed the formula. Again, this is also the odd multiple of lambda by two. This is also the odd multiple of lambda by two. The only the thing is that here, in this case, like if you want to find the third dark, n will be equal to three. So that is why we can move according to this formula. Now. Let us coming back to our question. So I have given you the complete theory background here. Uh, I have to erase everything. Anyways. Okay, so let us do it now. So now let us find the delta x here. So delta x is coming out to be 6 minus 5.6, which comes out to be 0 0.4 meter. Clearly, it is an integral multiple of lambda because lambda is 0 0.2. So when you divide this thing like 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.2, you get 2. So this is n is equal to 2. Now it means n is equal to 2. It means we are indeed talking about the second bright spot in the pattern. Like there is this pattern. This is the midpoint. This will be the central maxima, then the first maxima, then the second maxima, then the third maxima similarly downwards also the first maxima the second and the third so we are indeed talking about the second maxima here because n is equal to 2 now we know that intensity is directly proportional to a square so intensity dash will be four times a square because now the amplitude will be double isn't it now if amplitude is doubled intensity becomes four times so the answer will be d is it clear like from this we have jumped to the conclusion that it will be constructive interference and in constructive interference the resulting i is i1 plus i2 so it becomes 2i1 2i i1 plus i2 so it is 2i1 so this have been substituted here so hence the intensity is sorry not intensity amplitude which becomes double the amplitude okay so this is how we do this question my dear students let us verify our answer from the mark scheme and yes the answer is d indeed so in this uh, question i have tried to give you the complete theory for the interference and i have given you one new formula which is n minus half so please do not get confused and you have to adapt accordingly like if you are good with n plus half fine no problem at all if you want to move according to me it will be n minus half so my dear students, this is Professor Varun. All the best. Bye. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. See you.